So, admittedly, I haven't really played Skywalk for the best part of about three or four days, and I came back to this. Yep, yeah, that's right. The alpha is up. <laughs> We've got things to talk about. You might have already seen the news by now, but there is a pretty cracked new update on the alpha. Now, if you take a look at our new featured update items, we have attribute shards. And obviously, these aren't new. Now, you've always been able to apply these shards to Crimson Isle armor and items. However, um, at this point, you, you can literally just apply attribute shards onto, for instance, storm armor. You can do whatever you want. So if you want to go ahead and create some crazy storm armor with mana pool 10 and mana regen 10, then you can. And of course, it's not just storm armor and it's not just these attribute shards in particular. You can use any attribute shards and pretty much any item, which is insane. Now, if I'm being honest, there's a lot of different ways you can look at this update and take from it. And when I say update, obviously th this isn't official, like things can still change. This is the alpha, there's probably bugs and things like that that I need fixing, so it's probably not going to be exactly how we see it now. But it's going to be similar, let's, let's be real. Before you go on any further, where's the foraging update? <laughs> anyway. But when you actually take this update for what it is, it's actually insane. Think about how many different attribute shards there are, what different sort of abilities and buffs they give you. But my first thought is, well, realistically, majority of the players who play this game probably have fairly limited knowledge on attribute shards. Even though the Crimson Isles released a while ago, it's still a pretty exclusive island. And at the moment, how do you even obtain attribute shards and who or what kind of Skywalk player is even going to really have dealt with them? And realistically, it's going to be someone who's done Kudra. This may seem, you know, relatively simple, but... A lot of people haven't even, never mind gone to the Crimson Isles, been able to compete in the Crimson Isles, but nowhere near really even be able to do Kudra. So, my first impression of this update is absolutely ridiculous, considering, um, well, it's going to open up a, a ridiculous amount of new possibilities on different pieces of armour that may not have even been usable before. And, it's basically going to give everybody a taste of attribute shards that wouldn't have already, which is very good. Obviously there are other little changes with this update, it's like balancing patches and things like that, but this is the bottom line. And honestly, with probably about 80% of other Skywalk updates, why are we only just getting this now? Obviously this update is sort of caught everyone off guard, and it's a bit out of the blue, like updates usually are, but why did they not just make it so we could apply attribute shards to pretty much all the other items in the first place when the Crimson Isles was released? It makes so much more sense to have done that rather than just bring it out and be applied to certain items. Now, to be completely honest, um, I think this is sort of bridging the gap between the Crimson Isle armor and the regular armor at the moment. Now, one of the main reasons why a piece of armor like Crimson, Terra, Feather, or even Aurora was so good was the fact that you could apply attribute shards, something that no other pieces of armor that could really be comparable would offer. For instance, if we take Storm and Aurora, two pretty comparable pieces of armor. Of course, Storm is Storm, and Aurora can then come in basically five different variants. You've got your regular tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4, and tier 5. Now, prior to this update, of course, tier 5 Infernal Aurora upgraded would have been way, way better than this Storm set, for instance. But with the same attributes, that is definitely bridging the gap to the point where... I mean, I guess Storm is just going to be better in compared to, I guess, lesser tiers of Aurora. It's hard to test because I don't have any Aurora. I'm not trying to say that Storm is going to be better than Infernal Aurora because that just isn't true at this point. In Infernal Aurora with the same upgrades is still going to be better. But it's just not as much better as it was considering you can now put loads of different mana attributes onto your Storm armor. I saw someone in chat before saying the difference between um, Storm and um, fully upgraded Aurora with the same attributes on is around about 700 intelligence. Now don't get me wrong, 700 intelligence is still a lot of intelligence, but when you compare the price of Storm to Infernal Aurora, there is an absolute insane difference. So I guess for some people, it might just make them think twice about wanting to upgrade that Crimson Isle set all the way up to the max. But there's plenty more to talk about. But before we do go any further, you should subscribe to the channel. Become part of the 24%, it would help out a lot. And also, you should join the Discord server. It's linked in the description of every single video. Also, have you ever seen anything more beautiful than this? A whole inventory full of Hyperions. No, I'm not some insane duper. You can literally just, um, you know, come over to here. Duplicate item. I don't have a full inventory at this point, so I can't really do that. 
So we're back on the main server and I haven't checked on the auction house. I haven't checked the prices of anything. But what I would assume is that the prices of attribute shards should probably be increasing. Or at least the desired attribute shards. Okay, so yeah, I was definitely correct. Uh, for the cheapest attribute shard in the auction house at the moment, which is Undead 1, is 300k. That's insanity. Now, of course, you can apply any of these attribute shards to anything, which means you'll be able to apply something like Double Hook to a regular fishing rod, which is, um, yeah, explains why it's a million coins. We see an attribute like Speed going for 2.5 million. Speed 1. The cheapest Vitality book on the auction house is, for some reason, Vitality 2, but it's 6.3 mil. And after scrolling for about 5 minutes, we finally find our first Mana Pool 1 book, which is 7.5 million coins. I keep saying book, it's an attribute. I'm just so, I guess, just used to calling these sort of things a book, an enchantment book, but it's, it's, an, it's an attribute shard. Honestly, the prices of these shards at the moment are absolutely all over the place. Um, so if you have them, I would probably take advantage. However, they may increase even more, we, we don't know. Now the cheapest Mana Steel Shard on the AH is almost 13 mil, but it's Mana Steel 3 and there's nothing less than that. It's kind of weird. Unless the unless the lower ones are getting bought up straight away. And then also the cheapest Mana Regen is almost 15 mil. Now it makes sense that all of the Mana related attributes have gone up in price because I guess they're the main attributes and the subsequent armor that's going to be affected the most. Now of course something else that gives the edge over Storm Armor rather than something like Aurora in any shape or form is the fact that it's tradable. At the end of the day, if you upgrade an Aurora set to the max, put max attributes on it and then decide you don't want it or don't need it, then what can you really do with it? It just sits there. As for Storm, if you have max attributes on it, obviously it will lose some value when you apply the attributes, but you're still going to be able to sell it if you want to get rid of it. I'm not saying that it's wrong that you're not able to sell your Aurora, I'm just saying it's an advantage for something like Storm, especially when you can have attributes on it. And also, I feel like that's kind of coincided with the prices of Storm Armor. For instance, this one here, this chest plate, Growth 6, Protection 6, Wisdom 5, Gemstone Slots Unlocked, 5 Star Recombed. It's pretty much your standard, decently upgraded Storm chest plate. Now, almost 70 million coins. Prior to today, this, this was probably sitting at around well. Well cheaper, maybe 10 to 15 million coins cheaper. But what I would say is this update is um, going to be dropped soon and it, and, it, and it does what it's said to do on the alpha, then um, it's going to change everything. Well, not everything, but a lot of things. Now, as I already mentioned, one of the main reasons for this change is the fact that, well, think about it. If the admins or the developers were to bring out a new set of armor or a new weapon um, and you know, as it is now, you wouldn't be able to apply attribute shards onto the item considering it's only Crimson Art items that you can actually apply the attribute shards to. Now, if they bring out those items without the ability to apply attribute shards, are they really going to be better than Crimson Isle items? At the moment, Crimson Isle items are the endgame items, and after the update, they still will pretty much be there or thereabouts, the endgame items, if you fully upgrade them. But it really does make sense, because if you can't apply attribute shards to new items, are they really going to be as good as Crimson Isle items? Well, unless they're ridiculously better, then probably not. Now let me know what you think of this update in the comments. I think it'll be interesting to see what people think. Honestly, there aren't really many negatives. Realistically. Anyway, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.